talk to Dr. Richard Lane, who's a clinical psychiatrist and psychotherapist trained in cognitive neuroscience. And he's going to be talking about his research um, and his book, Neuroscience of Enduring Change Implications for Psychotherapy. So welcome back. Thank you very much. So in the previous segment, we were talking about the different types of therapy out there and how do you choose which therapy is best for the presenting problem that you have. And at the tail end, we were talking about memory and why memory, we were talking about specifically about EMDR um, and um, with that process, um, you actually look in your experiences of your past, knowing that they actually influence your future. You go to a memory, um, you use emotions, and then you do some type of me memory consolidation. And you just talked about something interesting that happens to sleep. I'm going to have to have you, let's actually go back to the basics and then go back into this because I got so excited that I could barely contain myself. So first of all, for the basics, um, what, how are you describing what a memory is? And uh, yeah, so let's just talk about how your, what your definition of what a memory is. Okay. I, I'd like to um, give credit to all the people who contributed to this book, aside from me. Yeah. So Lynn Nadell is a senior editor with me, and he's a world-class um, memory researcher who's been really at the forefront of our evolving understanding of what memory is. And then- yes. You know, we have 16 chapters and over 20 authors contributing to the different chapters. In the book, we talk about um, kind of the basic science of emotion, memory, emotion, memory interactions, as well as clinical applications. And we also just talk about what is the research agenda going forward. Mm -hmm. uh, and we, so we think it's going to be useful for researchers, for clinicians, and, and for the lay public. So what is memory? Okay, there, uh, memory is essentially a record of things that we've learned. And th there are several different kinds of memory that we highlight. Um, and those are episodic memory, which is memory for an event. Like for example, my talking to you. Mm -hmm. and, how pleasant that is. Okay, so I'm, <laughs> Thank you. I'm, uh, I'm encoding that as a specific event, all right? Okay. Then there's semantic memory, uh, which is kind of generalizable knowledge. Um, and uh, that would be things like, you know, what's the capital of California? And, you know, mm -hmm. uh, how many states are there in the union, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, that's generalizable knowledge. Mm -hmm. um, but then there's a particular kind of semantic memory or generalizable knowledge, which is schematic memory. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, a schema would be, you know, the kinds of sequence of events that happens that you expect to happen. Like when you go to a restaurant, what, what is going to happen there? Or when you have a romantic relationship or go on a date, what, what typically happens. Mm -hmm. When you have a, an interview about a book, you know, how does that typically go? Right. And so the idea is that actually episodic and semantic memories are related to one another and that the semantic memory is a distillation of all of the episodic memories that you've had all the episodic experiences that you've had. So my experience with you today in doing this interview will add to my schema for what it's like to do an interview about the book. Mm -hmm. Okay, what my expectations will be going mm -hmm. forward. All right. Mm -hmm. And then there's a, a third type of memory that's very important called procedural memory. And that's the kind of muscle memory that you develop when you've, you know, practice, you know, uh, in a certain sport mm -hmm. or, you know, you learn to play a particular instrument, right? Mm -hmm. I, I know that when I took piano lessons as a kid, you know, my fingers could just knew how to play the piece, right? Mm -hmm. Without even mm -hmm. thinking about it. Mm -hmm. And so much of what we do in interpersonal social situations are of that procedural type, actually. Okay. Oh, you know, interesting. Procedural type, yeah. 
Wow. Yeah, they're kind of automatic behaviors that are elicited by situations. Like we see that we're in a particular situation, then the schema kicks in. What do you expect to do? What do you expect will happen? And then how should you behave? So in some ways you're on autopilot. And when we're working in psychotherapy, we're trying to identify what those automatic processes are that are deeply ingrained. Mm -hmm. And what we're really trying to do is we're trying to change them for the better. Mm, okay. Okay. Now, uh, there is one thing that I want to point out, which is that we focus on enduring change and this idea of reconsolidation, changing your memories. Mm -hmm. Good. But psychotherapy that provides temporary relief can also be very, very valuable. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't, but, you know, ideally in the best of all possible worlds, you get the assistance and you feel better and then you stay better and the problem doesn't recur. That's, mm -hmm. And, and we think that by better understanding the psychological and brain processes involved, we have a better chance of doing psychotherapy in a way that will lead to enduring change. Okay. Through so, memory reconsolidation. Okay. And memory reconsolidation is, so let's say that, we'll take your example. Okay. So you've actually done a bunch of different radio interviews. So now you have a schematic of the sequence of events that are going to occur. Turn on my, I turn on my machine. I check my lighting. I'm going to have someone ask me questions. I have to be prepared for whatever you have this kind of like built in memory of what to expect based on the summation of all the other episodic events that you've had with various radio hosts. Um, and then, so you're like, I have an, I'm going to, you know, I'm, I'm in an autopilot, I'm kind of comfortable. And so there are wonderful things about being an autopilot, right? So you're not, your first one was probably a little bit challenging, but now, you know, you're on your fifth one, you're like, I know what to expect, CJ's no big deal, <laughs> right? So you have this autopilot behavior, but um, if, so now all of a sudden you want to change, um, let's say that um, during these, these, um, I'm trying to figure out if maybe something that you, a memory that you wanted to change. So like, let's say that um, you have this like, uh, oh, let's say that I, I know this may not be the case for you, but maybe you're like, you know what? I can't do these radio interviews. I hate talking to people and I have like research papers to write. I'd rather mm -hmm. be in the lab. Why do I have to spend doing all this promotion stuff? I know I need yeah. to, but I don't want to. Okay, so let's right. say that this mm -hmm. is a hypothetical memory that you're that you're carrying around that's associated with this. So you kind of click on this radio. Oh, here's another radio host I have to speak right. with. <laughs> that's an imposition to my regular research. Let's say theoretically this is what's happening. Yeah, yeah. How, how would you change? So now you want to go change this memory so that you're not like, oh, here comes another one of these. How yeah. would you go about changing? How, where does memory consolidation, how would we work with this material? Yeah. So um, let's just take verbatim what you said. Yeah. You know, I, I, let's say I have this preference for, you know, just doing the scholarly work and writing and, and really wanting to avoid doing such interviews because it's not a lot of fun and you know you also have the distress associated with not doing what you want to do but then let's say with the help of a mentor or by analogy a psychotherapist it's like well why don't you give it a try why don't you stop avoiding this thing that you dread or dislike Give it an opportunity, okay? And so then you go ahead and you have a new experience mm -hmm. and it actually turns out to be better than expected. That's mm -hmm. the most important thing. You have a set of expectations and something happens that's what we call a corrective experience. Mm -hmm. It's better than expected. Mm -hmm. And you actually kind of enjoy it, mm -hmm. right? And then that changes your schema for doing these kinds of interviews, it updates it. You may not love it yet, but you aren't so, it's not so aversive in your mind and you're willing to try it again. Mm -hmm. And then you do it again. And, you know, some are going to be good. You may have a 
in her view that's disappointing in certain ways, but it all, it all kind of distills out into a, a summary of all of your experiences together, which mm-hmm. can be an overall improvement. And so, I mean, to carry it further, you might not be very good at doing an interview to start. And then the more you do it, you find that you like it. And then you start looking to see, well, how do, how do people who do interviews well, what do they do? And you can start paying attention. And over time, you start getting good and you look forward to it. That would be a real right. transformation. Right. And so your, your schematic memory for that would be modified and updated. Okay, and, so you were saying, so it's a memory consolidation. So like, let's say five interviews that were like, okay, you know, okay, now you meet with CJ, like that was actually fun. <laughs> you know, so yes. you, you save and record. And then you're like, well, what did I do? Oh, I know what I did. I did a little, little, little. And then you have another like five that were great. And then five that were not, but you have this updating. You're like kind of like five plus five, five neutral, right? You have another five that are really fun so that you actually start looking forward to it. So let's say you have 10 great experiences and five neutral experiences. So those 10 positive ones, it's kind of like you're hitting a a save and replace on your file, right? You're like a little, Mm -hmm. you know, update file, update file, (laughs) whenever you're doing updates on your file. So you're saving and replacing this kind of new memory. And is that what memory consolidation is? It is memory reconsolidation. It is. It is. Um, But let me just say that um, when it comes to the kinds of problems that people have that bring them to psychotherapy, a way of thinking about this is that um, you have certain kinds of experiences that are really aversive or intolerable growing up and you and you basically promise yourself you're never going to have those kinds of experiences mm-hmm. again, right? Mm-hmm. And so you avoid, you always avoid taking the chance of having that mm-hmm. feeling activated again. And if, mm-hmm. if things happen beyond your control and those feelings are activated again, you kind of go into a tailspin, right? Mm-hmm. So much of what psychotherapy involves is developing enough of a sense of trust um, with the therapist that you begin to, well, first have different experiences with the therapist than you've had before. But then you then trust the therapist to try out something new mm. in your outside life that you've been avoiding for so long. Mm. And then you work through it. It's like, okay, you go for that interview and let's say you fall on your face. Okay, well, the therapist might be there to provide reassurance and let's try a less high profile interview or let's do a practice, you know, not on the air or something like that. Mm -hmm. And then you, you know, get back up and try again and lo and behold, you have these positive experiences that can lead to real change. And so I think that obviously fits for having relationships with people, social Mm -hmm. relationships, Mm -hmm. friendships and romantic relationships. Mm. Uh, I can definitely see it. Just, I mean, you would use the example of like being afraid of heights and you kind mm-hmm. of like little by little get yourself mm-hmm. exposed. And it sounds like similarly, you're creating new memories of what it means to be afraid of water. I'm getting my toe wet, my ankle wet, my knee wet. And you kind of kind of gather new experiences and memories. Um, so, yeah, is, is that a similar idea? Well, I think, yeah, yeah. I think one of the uh, a really well-studied example is a spider phobia, right? Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. it's like what they do is they, you know, see a picture of a spider, which freaks people out, but then you bring a live spider into the room and it might be across the room and then you move it a couple of feet closer and closer (laughs) and you habituate to it. um, And there's a kind of extinction of the fear. Now, that's different from reconsolidation. Okay? Mm, okay. This, is, this is an important point mm-hmm. because what you learn is that the spider has a different meaning in this particular context. What is, what is a challenge is how does that, does it generalize to all settings? 
and mm -hmm. is it enduring? So uh -huh. we make a distinction between extinction, which is a kind of new memory that, you know, adds to the old one and kind of suppresses the old one, but the old one doesn't go away mm. versus reconsolidation where the memory itself is altered. And that's why we think it can lead to enduring change. Ah, uh, okay. The memory mm -hmm. itself is altered versus a new memory in a certain context. Like, yes, if you put a spider in my floor, in my psychotherapist's office, mm -hmm. yes, I'm fine. But now mm -hmm. I'm out in the wilderness and I see a spider next to my tent. <sighs> not generalized. <laughs> okay. So that you could have a temporary extinction, but it's not an enduring change. Yeah. Okay. Right. All right. In the next segment, I want to talk more about memories in terms of what types of memories can be changed, how can they be erased, and then you you talk about in your book the importance of language. Um, so we have been talking to Dr. Lane about his book, The Neuroscience of Enduring Change: Implications for Psychotherapy, and specifically, we've been talking about memory, all the different types of memory, and then how um, how um, memory updates and maybe changes and the different types of memories that can be extinct, extinguished. Oh, they, they can, once... Different kinds of memories that can be reconsolidated. Reconsolidated. All right. Yes. Lovely. Okay. So then in the next segment, let's talk more about memory. Um, and please make sure to check out the book, Neuroscience of Enduring Change Implications for Psychotherapy. Thank you so much.